On a related note, this is Tommy Bracco. On a related note, this is a song that we wrote. Now let's get to the podcast. You're listening to On a Related Note, where the world's most interesting people play a series of ridiculous games in order to uncover a secret code word. I'm Chris Dalriva. And I'm John Franklin. And who are we here with today, John? I said it before, and I'll say it again. We are with a guy who can be seen on a multitude of things. Broadway, you could have seen him on Big Brother. You could have seen him on the latest season of The Challenge. Tommy, why don't you tell the people who you are? What's up, everyone? This is Tommy Bracco, and I'm so happy to be here on On A Related Note with John and Chris. Cousins, I love this. They, they live in Hoboken, which is so close to me in Staten Island, so it's great. We get to hang now. I love that. Amazing. Um, all good things, yeah. So speaking of all good things, you've been on a lot of all good things. Uh, let's start from the jump. You were in Broadway. You were on Newsies, which we talked about a little bit, but why don't we do it for the people here is that we have a weird connection with this, is that my first date with my ex-girlfriend, we saw Newsies on Broadway, the Disney production, in the theaters, Yeah, which you were in. Yeah. Um, tell me about like that like that come up, like that's your background, right? Like your, your history is in theater, right? Like that's where you come from, right? Yeah. So I went to LaGuardia high school, which is the school that the movie fame is based off of a performing arts high school. And, uh, I was studying theater. Um, so, you know, I've, I've been a theater guy for my entire life. I've been studying to be on Broadway and, uh, yeah, the reality TV stuff kind of just happened as a fluke and it's kind of stuck, I guess. But it wasn't supposed to be that way, but although I'm not mad at it, I have a lot of fun doing the shows. No, because you're you're a storied fan of Big Brother, and oh you my did God, yes. awesome on your season of Big Brother. So, like, Thanks. what was the what was that? You talked about it with us. What was the process like of the, uh, the auditioning, on auditioning, auditioning? Yeah, so major fan of Big Brother, but they don't like to bring actors. On in on the show as house guests, they like think, professional actors. Yeah, they don't like to bring professional actors in in the into the game because people feel like they're hiring actors. People feel like they're not really there for the game, and it, they're there for the wrong reasons. So I tried out for Big Brother, I think four or five times, Jeez. and the first few times they would say to me, "You're, we love you, we get it. You're a super fan, but you're an actor. We don't want actors." Man. So it was um, harder for you to get on Big Brother than onto Broadway. Um, oh wow! Uh, <laughs> different. It's it's hard to say. It's just different. Yeah. I always say that with Broadway, it tests what you can do. With reality TV, it tests who you are. Okay. Oh um, wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, like these these social experimental games that we play. Um, it tests who you are as a person, what you're, how far you're willing to go, what your brain can come up with to get yourself out of sticky situations, how you choose to handle your relationships with people, um, how you compete, but how you compete is kind of at the bottom of the list. Mm, it's really right. everything else. So that's why the reality TV show world is very much, it, it tests who you are, whereas Broadway tests what you can do. Can you tumble? Can you sing? Can you... Um, dance for seven minutes straight That's and crazy. then sing your face off at the at the end of the number. It's it's um, more skill based. It's gr- got to be grueling, physically yeah. grueling and oh mentally. God, but yeah. like I couldn't even imagine. Two yeah, shows a day. it's crazy. Two shows a day, and the thing is, like you you do two shows a day twice a week, but there's also rehearsals. So uh, you're rehearsing in the day and then doing shows at night. Hmm. It's basically like you're doing back to back two show days over and over again. Jeez. Insane. It's a lot. It's yeah. insane. And I think like, I think so many people watching reality TV try to make heads or tails of the decisions you make or the things you do. And they try to decipher who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. I think the way that you portrayed it is so interesting because it, even when you're on stage, like you're, you're channeling a different side of things. That, Absolutely. That anybody, yeah. How do you, when you meet people in public who are, say, fans of The Challenge or Mm -hmm. Big Brother, how do they react to you and how do you kind of react to them? It's, I I mean, it's very surreal when I meet, like, fans of the shows, whether it be Big Brother, The Challenge, even Broadway, Newsy fans. Yeah, Newsy fans are legit. Yeah, it's (laughs) crazy. Um and it, it kind of feels weird to me, to be honest with you, because I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't deserve this. Like, I'm like, yeah. I'm just, 
I, my family always makes fun of me because I always say I'm regular. I'm regular. Like, that's, yeah, I yeah. Don't, like, I don't know. It feels weird to accept that. I don't feel like I'm, I think the reason why I don't feel like I'm different is because before all of this, I was a fan of Broadway. I was a fan of big brother. I was a fan yeah. of the challenge. So like, I just was a fan that tried out and got on and now I'm, on it but i'm still just Crazy. a fan at the end of the day if that makes sense well i think a, the cool thing about uh being on this podcast is we're gonna get to test both sides of you your uh, absolutely your broadway oh side gosh. and your uh your reality tv side yeah because and john you're, you're a broadway guy too i'm you're a not just a reality broadway TV guy, guy. <laughs> i'm but every year for christmas i get my mom tickets to a broadway show oh, i love that dude we'll talk That's we'll chit chat about it too after this but i love broadway and that brings us to the point of the game, Chris. Why don't you explain the game to everybody and what time he's playing for? Yeah, so we, you know, we gave you a little description up at the top, but the way this works is there is a secret code word, and you're going to play a series of, I will say, ridiculous games over the next half hour or so to try to uncover what that code word is. Each of the games is going to be themed around a topic, which will be, hint you towards the ultimate topic. Oh my gosh! Um, today's today's <laughs> topic is a person. Um, that person can be real or fictional. And you will be playing for a prize. Uh, John, why don't you introduce the prize? Tommy, congratulations on the chance to play for the <laughs> Fat Bastard <laughs> bottle of wine. Uh, here's the thing, Tommy. It is a it is a great prize. I mean, a 2020 Pinot Noir. Great year for wine. 2020. Um, if you win, you get the bottle of wine. But if you lose, I'm going to give you the Sharpie and you get to sign it. And if the next person that comes on the podcast wins, they get a Tommy Bracco signed <laughs> bottle of red wine. So they best, would be so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want don't a Tommy throw, Bracco signed <laughs> bottle of wine? Don't throw the game for the merchandise. Okay. We don't, we don't want you to do that. <laughs> um, but we're hoping that you win. We really do. We want everybody to come on the podcast and win. So the prize is for you. So you're playing for something. Mm -hmm. It's not just pride. Uh, Chris, why don't you tell everybody about the first game that Tommy's going to play? So the first game is going to be called Starring Hillary Clinton. If Hillary is the candidate, which I doubt, that would be a dream come true. Oh, uh, I forgot. We have to shout out our sponsors. John, take it away. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I almost jumped right over that. Starring Hillary Clinton is brought to you by Cozy Crafts. Ever need a blanket? Well, Cozy Crafts has you covered. Start your membership with promo code ClintonCast for 15% off your first class. Get crocheting with Cozy Crafts today. Thank you, John. So the way Starring Hillary Clinton works is we're going to read you a description of a movie, a short little description that you might see if you're scrolling around on TV. IMDb. Uh, but <laughs> while, when every time a woman's name comes up, we are going to substitute that name for Hillary Clinton. Every time a man's name comes up, we're going to substitute that for Harry Styles. If there's a second man's name, it'll be Pete Davidson. And you're going to have to try to identify what the movie is. Yes, okay. and just for everybody listening so you understand, Tommy is holding the guest book right now. The guest book is where Tommy gets to take notes throughout the game to make sure he doesn't miss anything. Thank you for this is look at the Vanna White effort from mm -hmm. Tommy. We love it. We you love can it. Tell this man's a star. Yeah, he knows. He knows <laughs> what he's doing. Um, so Tommy gets to take notes throughout the game. Tommy, are you ready to play on I, related note? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. I am pretty nervous. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm, I'm ready. ready. Let's go. Let's right. go. Good luck, buddy. All We're right. gonna crush it. So here is your first item in starring Hillary Clinton. In this beloved musical, pompous phonetics professor Harry Styles is so sure of his abilities that he takes it upon himself to transform a cockney working class girl into someone who can pass for a cultured member of high society. His subject turns out to be the lovely Hillary Clinton, who agrees to speech lessons to improve her job, job prospects. Harry and Hillary clash, then form an unlikely bond, one that is threatened by an aristocratic suitor, Pete Davidson. Oh my gosh. We could go through that description yep, again. read it one more time, uh, please. <laughs> Chris? Also, we're going to give you the answer even if you don't Yeah, yeah, it, don't so. worry. It's not important. Just remember, th these are the clues that are going to get you to the final game. So if you miss something up here, it's not the end of the world because you still got to get to the end. I think the stakes are very high, John, so <laughs> I beg to differ. I'm, I'm in it to win it. I'm not going to miss okay. any questions. Maybe just this one, but <laughs> we will stakes, see. The stakes are very high. <laughs> got, that got me. That got <laughs> in this beloved musical, pompous phonetics professor Harry Styles. So he's a professor. Is, yeah. okay. is so sure of his abilities that he takes it upon himself to transform a cockney working class girl into someone who can pass for a cultured member of high society. His subject turns out to be the lovely Hillary Clinton, uh -huh. who agrees to speech lessons to improve her job prospects. Harry and Hillary clash, then form an unlikely bond. 
one that is threatened by an aristocratic suitor, Pete Davidson. I will say this is a classic. It was a musical. A classic. It's a okay. classic. It's, it's, it played in Lincoln Center recently, right? Uh, uh, they, wow. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know what it's called, and I forget. Am I right or wrong? I don't know. I okay. actually don't know what played in Lincoln Center recently. <laughs> I, I, but that is... You, I could be wrong. Is, Tom, Tommy, this is like one of the classic musicals. Yeah, I yeah, uh-huh. And it's one that I've actually never seen, but I know the name. What was her name starred in it? Um, was it Kelly O'Hara? Oh, wow. Actually, yes. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> and it played in Lincoln Center. Um, and I can't think of what it's called. She's like, ah, uh, she's like, oh, wait a second. Professor, could it be Annie Get Your Gun? No. no, you could spit an answer. Where, like we said, this 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 is the whole game isn't riding on this question. I mean, it, to me, it is. <laughs> um, uh, can I have a hint? Yeah, I'll give you a hint. Um, I will give you that. In a more recent movie, mm-hmm. I'd say early two thousands, Lindsay Lohan plays this character. But it's the a musical within the wider movie. Whoa. That is a crazy hint, but it, it could help you. If you think about Lindsay Lohan movies. I have no idea. This is so embarrassing. I'm so annoyed with myself. All right. We will give it to you, and then we'll play you a short clip. It is... Um, my Fair Lady. I knew it. It played Lincoln Center. <laughs> it Sarah. did, yeah. Okay. That was the one. I knew it. Oh, my God. So, but I didn't know the Lindsay Lohan fact. That threw me off. Okay, I didn't help you. I made it worse. No, but it's okay. okay. But I knew it. It played at Lincoln Center. It was Kelly O'Hara. I knew that, but I just didn't know the title of the so show. So here's a little clip uh, for, our, okay. for our listeners okay. at home. Not yet. <laughs> All right, Eliza. Say yeah, Eliza the game. Do yep. They rhyme in spine, stays mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Didn't I say that? No, Eliza, you didn't sigh that. You didn't even say that. So we'll go on to our second one here. Uh, it seems like your head was in the right spot. Um, I think I think they will get better. Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, if they, we can only go uphill. From yes, here. exactly. We can only get better. From I, here. All right, wait. I will give you. I will give you this. The first question when Alyssa did the show, uh-huh. she got it wrong and got the end game right. Okay, so all I right. think you're you're on the trend. You're on the trend. All right, number two. After returning from their honeymoon and showing home movies to their friends, Harry Styles and Hillary Clinton learn that her parents have heard that she was married. She has married her true love. And wish to invite him to their kingdom called Far, Far Away. Okay. The catch is Hillary's parents are unaware of the curse that their daughter. Uh, wait, sorry. The catch is Hillary's parents are unaware of the curse that struck their daughter and have assumed she married Pete Davidson, not a 700 pound ogre with horrible hygiene and a talking donkey pal. Shrek the musical. What? What? Shrek. Not the musical, it's a movie. Oh, it's a movie? Shrek. Wait, it's not the original Shrek. <laughs> but we're, is it the musical version or a movie? It's a movie. There, there's a movie. This is oh, a movie. I thought we were back at musicals. Damn it. I'm like, there's only one Shrek musical. There is only one Shrek musical. Okay. And actually, this is a storyline in Shrek the musical. So that's a little tough. No, but it's okay. I'm really not doing well here. All right. So no, we no, got... but you're on it. You're on it. You're on Shrek. So it's Shrek. Um, It's got to be just Shrek too. Yep. Yeah, yeah, there it is. There it is. All right. That'll All right. Be right. Yeah. Here's a little clip from Shrek 2 for everyone. <laughs> Wasn't she supposed to kiss Prince Charming and break the spell? Well, he's no Prince Charming, but they do look. Happy now? We came. We saw them. <laughs> now let's go before they light the torches. <laughs> They're my parents. Hello. They locked you in a tower. Hey, that was for my own. Good. Now here's our chance. Let's go back inside and pretend we're not home. Harold. We have to be quick. While they're not looking, we can make. Are we watching the whole movie? Shrek, stop it! Everything's gonna be <laughs> a disaster. There is no way you can do this. But I really, really, really don't want to. Be all right. So, a nice little clip there from Shrek Two, one of the great movie right. soundtracks of all time. It's true. Uh, Tommy, how are you feeling now? Um, are you pre- starting to grasp it a little? I'm pretty disappointed in myself. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. Uh, crushed as. Probably the best word uh, that I could find right now, um, but yeah, we're but 
nonetheless but you're ready trending to up. prevail. You're trending up. Let's We're only here. getting better. Yeah, yeah. sure. So, so here's number three. Uh, again, these these are movies. Uh, they could also have be been musicals. musicals. Got it. Um, a young novice, Hillary Clinton, is sent by her convent in 1930s Austria to become a governess to the seven children of a widowed naval naval officer, Harry Styles. Hmm. Whoa. I honestly have no idea. You, yes, you do. I promise you do. <laughs> this one, we, you I said will, it's from Russia or something. No, Austria. 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 I will. The give family you a is Austrian. The family's Austrian. We will give you a hint that this was a famous uh, movie and a famous musical. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, okay. So it's probably cabaret. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's seven children, Tommy. There are seven oh, children. Oh, sounds of music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's a little sound of music clip. Key, it's going great. <laughs> Doe, a deer, a female deer. Ray, a drop of golden sun. Me, a name. All right, and we will have. My favorite one was always me, a name I call, I call myself. <laughs> I was like, it felt like the writers were really reaching. Me. I mean, <laughs> I call myself. Me. I always, I said to Chris once that in Sound of Music that I don't think she actually really had favorite things. Like, one of them is like brown paper packages tied up with string. Like, that's male. Yeah. Like, that is just literally packages. Like, like, why is that your favorite thing? That doesn't make any sense. That I don't doesn't know. make any sense. Who wrote that? Come Rod, on. Rogers and I don't know. Oh, it's, Rogers it's a Roger and Hammerstein. Hammerstein? Yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, wow. This, look at me. Episode two, flaming Rogers. Who wrote that? <laughs> Who wrote that? <laughs> so here's our, fi- here's our final item from starring Hillary Clinton. Okay. Uh, shy San Francisco teenager Hillary Clinton is thrown for a loop when from out of the blue, she learns the astonishing news that she's a real life princess. As the heir apparent to the crown of a small European princi- principality of Genovia, Hillary begins a comical journey toward the throne when her strict and formidable grandmother, Jojo Siwa, shows up to give her princess lessons. Hmm. Was this also made into a music? I don't, I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, not <laughs> yet. Is it a princess, di- the princess diaries? Yes. It is. Yeah, yeah, there it is. He's on the board. But ladies. It, it wasn't workshops, so it hasn't been made into a musical yet, but they're on the way. And wow. Princess. And here's a little, Diaries. Here's a, here's a little clip. Charlotte, take notes, will you? The insider information. Amelia, circle slowly so I can evaluate the work to be done. Amelia, does your bad posture affect your hearing? Turn. Oh, sorry. No, 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 slowly turn. Slowly. Thank you. Well, carriage, obviously. Hairstyle. Complexion. Mm. Stop. Eyes. Lovely. Okay. So that's, I, that's our first game. Got to tell you, Anne Hathaway in that movie, incredible. Yeah. Incredible. She, she's always incredible. She is always incredible. It's true. She's so good. Wow. We just watched the other night, uh, me and my family, we watched her and Les Mis, that scene where she's cutting her hair and crying. It's it's so good. That movie musical was better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. I, I had low expectations for yeah, it. I was me nervous. Too. So what are your favorite uh, favorite musicals? Yeah, run them down. Give us the, right. the Tommy top five. So I really enjoy a spectacle when I go see a Broadway musical. Okay. For that reason, I love Moulin Rouge. I, it is okay. like one of my favorite shows I've seen in a very long time. Um, I also love Wicked. I've seen Wicked over 30, 40 times, actually. That's At wow. this point, it's over 40 times. Whoa. Um, I love just going back and seeing how different people play Glinda and Alphaba. Um, so big fan of Wicked and Moulin Rouge. I also loved the revival. I mean, Spring Awakening. I loved. Oh, that's a great show. So good. And the revival was so amazing. Um, a Chorus Line is a classic, my favorite. Um, Do you think as someone who's been on Broadway, when you watch a show, you're looking for different things than say when, you know, you're sitting there with your family who's just a fan? Yeah. When I go see a show, I'm thinking, which track can I play? <laughs> That's 100%. awesome. I'm like, could I fit into this show anywhere? Could I audition? Will there be a spot for me one day? A hundred percent. When you were a kid growing up and like, you know, you go to a, an arts high school, like you said, was there one particular role that you either saw, you saw or you heard the soundtrack? You're like that is me. Like that's, that's what I want to do one day. Like that's the exact role I want to play. Honestly, I really would die to play Timon in the Lion King. Really? Wow. Because it, you know, Nathan Lane played him in the movie, the original movie. Right. 
And I so look up to Nathan Lane. He's just like this short, funny Italian. Uh, just he's got the accent. He's a comedic actor. Like that's everything I would love to be one day. So that's like a role that I feel like is attainable to an extent maybe. Mm. Um, so I would, I remember watching that and being like, maybe I can do this one day. And I still feel that way. It's crazy. We'll it's crazy. You said that. Cause mine was Nathan Lane, Max B. Alistock in the producers. Yep. And I saw him on, in the producers, the movie version. And I was like, that I want to do that one yep. day, and like obviously I didn't get on Broadway or theater or anything. But <laughs> Not that yet. Was, that was when I was like, that's what I want to do like comedy stuff, and I want to mm-hmm. entertain. It's crazy that Nathan Lane was your guy. I mm-hmm. love that. Him in the Birdcage is also one of my favorite movies of all so time. So good. He's amazing. Amazing. Oh my yeah. gosh. So, kind of talking more about the Broadway thing and stuff like that. When you got the call uh, that you were going to be at Paper Mill, mm-hmm. right, the first run of Newsies. Yep. Was that that was like your first big jump, right? Yeah. What was that? Do you remember that reaction? Like, what was that like for you? What was that moment? For those listening, the Paper Mill Playhouse is a theater in New Jersey. Yes. Very, very famous theater. Yeah. Yeah. Famous theater. You guys know your stuff. Like, this is so great. Like, coming (laughs) here and talking about this. Um, So, yeah, before a show goes to Broadway, they do an out of town tryout. And it's usually at a smaller regional house. Um, Paper Mill Playhouse, like you guys mentioned, is a smaller theater where a lot of shows go to do their out of town tryout sure. before they move to Broadway and newsies did that. Um, so we did the show at paper mill and it's funny. I was actually in the ferry terminal and I had was running to catch the ferry. I just missed it. They closed the doors on my face and I get a call from my agent that I booked it. Hold on, hold that thought for a second. Yeah. So I'm running for the ferry to catch the ferry. The door shut my face and how apropos that I get the phone call that I'm going to do this sh- new show that's potentially going to Broadway while I'm in the ferry terminal after I had commuted to the city in this ferry terminal for uh, the last five years of my life at that point. Um, it, so yeah, it was very full circle moment. It was, and uh, I got the phone call and I was just pacing back and forth in on the Manhattan side of the Staten Island ferry. It was oh so funny. Gosh. And that was for Newsies, right? Yeah, that was for, funny enough, that was for Newsies and Pretty Woman. No way. Yeah. I, that That's the other thing, too. So uh, I think a lot of times it's highlighted that you were in Newsies, but I didn't know you were in Pretty Woman until yeah. I started to research you. Yeah. That had to have been pretty cool. Yeah, that's been a pretty it great experience. Great. I mean, I always say, like, Newsies, I liked the show better, but Pretty Woman, I liked the role better. Like, that... Okay. It was such a fun role. It was such a fun show. Um, it just really couldn't find its legs the way that Newsies did, but sure. it's still on tour and kicking and running and doing great. It's a good show. It's The music is amazing. How long were you in each of the those shows for? So Pretty Woman was about a year, Okay. and Newsies was three years. Oh, wow. That's, now, a, that's yeah. a long tenure. Now, yeah. I got an insider Newsies question for yeah. you. So I was doing my research, and I found a video of you on YouTube oh talking about God. something. Oh, no. And <laughs> I, I found I found this video where you talk about how you're an addiction coach. Yeah. But, had, uh, uh, yeah, the but, accent teacher. You're uh-huh. right. But little thing that people might not know is that you were basically the co-accent teacher because of where you come from. Yeah. Right? That's so funny. So <laughs> um, actually funny enough, when we were in the audition process and the final callbacks, I raised my hand. I asked a question. I was like, uh, you know, what note is this, whatever. And the whole entire room turned their heads. It was like out of a movie. They all turned their heads and looked back at me. And the director goes, um, by the way, everyone, can we all just try and sound like him <laughs> they're reading the sides and stuff? Um, but they had a dialect coach, Shane Anyon. She was amazing. Um, but, you know, she she would once in a blue moon when someone would ask her a question, she'd be like, just go ask Tommy. Just ask Tommy <laughs> to read the sides and, and that's it. Then you'll know how to say it. Oh, it's so cool. It was man. cool. Call yeah. up Tommy's grandmother. And yeah. See how yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, that's a, see, like I love that stuff because I think like people always think where we're from, the way we sound, especially like this side of the country, like they think it's almost like an act or like it's fake. Yeah. Sometimes it's like I have no choice that I put an A W where an O can be. Like you know what I yeah. mean? Like it. To be honest with you, I think the act is when you turn it off. Absolutely, like, I, I totally agree. I could even feel myself like as I'm sitting here getting more comfortable and stuff, the accent's starting to come out more, and I'm like. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. Like yeah. when you sit down at first in a new space, you 
you're on a podcast, you're like, yeah. okay, yeah, you know, let's let's be a little more proper. But then once I'm like comfortable and relaxed, you feel at home a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's kind of the real me, like you said. That's that's do you who think, we are. Do you yeah? Do you think that the real you is why that Newsies resonated with you a little more as like yeah. a show? Yeah, for sure. It was that, and it was also um, the cast. Like we. I think a, r- a ridiculous amount of us, I can't remember if it was 15, 16 of us out of the cast of 30 were making our Broadway debuts. No way. So we were like really coming up together and we were fight like the fight that the newsies were fighting for in the show was reflective to what the cast was fighting for in real life. Whoa. Cause we were in paper mill and we weren't guaranteed to go to Broadway, but because we were fighting so hard and the fans were, reacting the way they were people were flying from all over the world literally we had people fly from australia to see newsies at paper mill playhouse so like wow. the fans and our like love for the show kind of pushed disney to bring it to the next level and let it evolve yeah and i mean as a person fan of the show uh jeremy jordan had to have been awesome to work with right? yeah he's yeah. great he's awesome he's amazing um super talented it was awesome and also to see him kind of come up in his career at that time too because sure. he was filming smash which was a, a i thought a great series um super fun yep. but uh he was filming that in the day and then he was coming doing the shows at night and he was nominated for a tony it was like he blew up out of crazy. nowhere uh, like crazy. kind of right at this moment so it was pretty nuts. It was insane. Well, talking about pretty nuts, why don't we get to our next game? Then? Yeah. Oh that's, boy, that's a great that's a great introduction to our next game, scratching headlines. Uh, before I describe it, John, another word from our oh, sponsor. Oh, right. Thank you. Scratching Headlines is brought to you by Time Warp. Start organizing all of your old yearbooks into one online file with Time Warp. Turn back the clock today. So the way Scratching Headlines works is I'm going to read both you and John. I haven't uh, seen these. John hasn't seen these. I'm going to read you okay. groups of four headlines. Uh, three of them are real. One of them is fake. You have to take a, a guess at which one is the fake one. Okay. Um, so you and John will both submit a guess. We work together or is no, it? No, it's against each other. Oh, okay, great. Got We're it. Rivals. We're rivals. <laughs> rivals here. This is it. This could be the start of what gets us on the challenge next. Oh, boy. <laughs> We're going to submit this as being like challenge rivals. It'll Tommy be rivals. And John. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so round one here. I'm going to read four headlines. One of these is fake. Um, Headline one. I don't know why I paused there really long. (laughs) Headline one. I moved from London to New York for my hinge match after three dates. Five months later, we're married and having a baby. Two. Former British Prime Minister Jeremy Corbyn played a version of the video game Doom that lets you kill Margaret Thatcher. Three. (laughs) Winston Churchill's grandson claims his grandfather never ate another sausage after the start of World War II. And four, London woman claims, quote, I spend Christmas alone because of my weird phobia. I throw up when I see tinsel. (laughs) Okay. Do you have any gut reactions to any of those? Can you read them again? (laughs) (laughs) Sure. I moved from London to New York for my hinge mm. match after three dates. Five, that sounds real. Five months later, we're me. married and having a baby. That sounds real to me. But who cares about that? Like, yeah, why like, are yeah, they that's like, making true. A, that's an true. article about that? I don't know. You ever read the New York Times? <laughs> we're not supposed to be working together, John. We, we can't be I'm thinking, playing I'm the mind game. i my thoughts to myself. He's tricking me, and I'm, I almost fell for it. <laughs> Former British Prime Minister Jeremy Corbyn played a version of the video game Doom that lets you kill Margaret Thatcher. Hmm. Three, Winston Churchill's grandson claims his grandfather never ate another sausage after the start of World War II. Okay. And four, London woman claims, quote, I spend Christmas alone because of my weird phobia. I throw up whenever I see tinsel. That's real. <laughs> That's It has to be real. Is it? You don't think or I can be real? No, you no I'm, I, I think it has to be real. I'm with, <laughs> I, oh, I think nothing but my own thoughts. All right, John, why don't, you, why don't you kick us off with a guess? Here? Okay, I think my gut is telling me that the first and the last one are real. I think the hinge date is real, and I think the tinsel thing is preposterous. And also, you wrote these, and I don't think you would have gotten that outlandish. Um, so, can you read the second one for me? 
Former British Prime Minister. Yeah, I w- I w- I'm going to guess that one. I, okay. I The fact that he would play a video game and kill Margaret Thatcher <laughs> feels outrageous to me. And that sounds very historical and up your alley. So I'm going to go with that one. I was actually going to go with that one, too. Can we say the same yeah, answer? Yeah, we can, of course, say the same All right, answer. Cool. All right, you are both... Incorrect. Oh. That is real. The incorrect one was Win. Not the incorrect. The fa- the false one was Winston Churchill's grandson claims his grandfather never ate another sausage after the <laughs> start of it. World War Two. I was gonna say, what does sausage uh, have to do with World War Two? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna go back into the audio of the show and just clip you going the sausage and make it my uh, ringtone. The, so- the sausage. <laughs> the sausage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so the one that's wrong is Winston Churchill. Yep. Okay, so we didn't get a one. We didn't get okay. out of one right. That's all right. Still, We're still zero, tied. Zero. We got three more rounds. <laughs> Round two. Queen Elizabeth considered transitioning genders in the last few years of her life. That's the whole headline? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Number two. Boozy Brit tourist hunted by police for brazen Christmas Day sex with woman in public. Three, anti-abortion parliament member Jacob Rees Mogg admits profiting from the sale of abortion pills. And four, royal family fans, quote, still find it weird to hear God save the king as King Charles gives his first Christmas speech. The frig? Yeah. What? I'm confused at, th- at that. Because um, the song was God save the, the queen. queen. I know that. Okay. Yeah. there was a, That was a whole thing around the World Cup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah there was a huge thing because like all the players kept singing God save the queen. And they were like, they're not real Englishmen. <laughs> like, what? They've been singing the same thing for like 40 years. Hmm. Um, so wait, go back, Chris. Can you reread them one more time? Queen Elizabeth considered transitioning genders in the last few years of her life. Two, boozy Brit tourists hunted by police for brazen Christmas Day sex with woman in public. Three, anti-abortion parliament member Jacob Reese mogg admits profiting from the sale of abortion pills. And four, royal family fans, quote, still find it weird to hear God save the king as as King Charles gives his first Christmas speech. Okay. Um, am I still going first? I can go first. Okay. okay. I'm guessing the fourth one. The royal family fans still find it weird. Okay. That's my guess. You know, see, here's my here's my thinking. The first one is too short. It doesn't give me enough for me to pick it. Like, mm-hmm. doesn't, I don't know, why would you write an article about it? But at the same time, it just feels like a clickbait article. Mm. Um... The God Save the King one was in the news, and that's why it was like a, an initial reaction to me th- okay. that you might have written it because it was in the news. But I don't want to pick the same one as Tommy because because uh, you want to mix it up and yeah, have some fun. I want I want to, I want to cause some controversy. So what was the second one? What what was the one that had the brazen sex man? Uh, the boozy Brit. That was yeah. It, I'm picking that one. Uh, again, you are both incorrect. Damn it. The, the one I made up was about Queen Elizabeth considering transitioning <laughs> genders. No way. <laughs> we, we fell for it. We were like, yeah, that's yeah, she I did. Mean, that she she must have. have been real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we were like, why? Of course that story would come out after she died. Like, oh, <laughs> man. You know what? I give you credit because I'll tell you the clue that I was looking for. You read the last one without even looking at your computer. So I was like, oh, he hasn't yeah. made that up. I but he really just have it memorized. That was like, that's re- really impressive. <laughs> really good gamesmanship though. I was by studying you. the way he read that. I'm like, <laughs> all right. So, so you're both still at zero. We're still at zero. Yeah, we're not doing well. We're not I doing well. Either of you scores one point. We might win. <laughs> all right, round three. Okay. British woman's horror as naked burglar dies after smashing into glass pane in murder attempt. Oh my god. Two, British man changes name to Celine Dion after getting <laughs> drunk in lockdown. Isn't it trademarked, honey? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would, ooh. <laughs> Why would you say that out loud? Maybe. Three, oh, you, you jerk are. off. Like, you're such a jerk. <laughs> Fringe Welsh political party pushes for secession from Great Britain in an effort to form a new country, uh, Welgium with Belgium. And four, aliens are breeding with humans to save Earth, claims Oxford professor. <laughs> hmm. uh, I'll go first this time um, because you went first last time and I'm a gentleman. Um, if I had to guess, I know whale gym was like a thing because my coworker from Ireland talked about it. Okay. I'm like almost sure that was a thing. <laughs> um, I The way you read the last one, 
<laughs> I'm picking it. I'm putting I'm putting my hand on the buzzer and just All saying right. aliens, like, breeding. aliens are breeding. And you only you would cite an Oxford professor for that. Wait, can you read them one more time? I'm yeah, so sure. sorry. I know uh, that's a boring part of the podcast, but I take the game very seriously. <laughs> so I need to know what I, where I'm what I'm working with. British woman's horror as naked burglar dies after smashing into glass pane in murder attempt. All right. British man changes name to Celine Dion after getting drunk in lockdown. Three. Fr- I'm picking that one. Okay. Let's mix it up. One of us are right. One of us are wrong. <laughs> the Celine Dion thing is crazy. If it, it's it, trademark, it's it, gotta it, be it, trademark. You are both wrong. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one I made up was number one. one. No, three oh, about shit. whale whale jump. <laughs> no, no, that's way. real. That yeah. was, I made that. <laughs> you didn't. No, that is not real. <laughs> Come on. I was going to pick that first. I should have went with my Now, God. again, I didn't read this. I swear Maybe God. I was playing defense there. You did, and I was like, oh, shit, his co-worker said <laughs> His something. Irish co-worker. <laughs> Anyone but John's Irish co-worker. <laughs> I did not read any of these stories. I just, the head, if the headline exists, I counted it. So okay. I have okay. no other information. Is is that the last one? <laughs> no, we have one more. Okay, this so is let's it. See. It's for yeah, all the marbles. It's going to be a draw. It is a, it is a limp to the finish <laughs> right now. Okay, I have a question. Uh, is there a reason why all of these are about the UK? Is that part of a hint? Possibly. Possibly. UK. <laughs> Gonna write that in my book. <laughs> the guest book. All right, number four. Not not trademark, not a sponsor. <laughs> Cam- not- Cambridge professor wants to start a department completely dedicated to the study of Meghan Markle. Mm. Two British tourists spending her Christmas in Perth is stunned by hilarious Australian habit. Quote, every single person that walks past you says, good morning, how are you? <laughs> Three, dog poo war breaks out in Scotland. <laughs> and four, UK travel agency helping extreme holidaying Brits to visit world's most dangerous places. You get to go first this time. <laughs> Three, I picked the dog poo. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to pick the dog poop, but it's, it's the last <laughs> no, one. You got to pick a different one. So it, it, one of yeah, one of us has to be right. Well, I, one of us doesn't have to be right. No, but, no. Um, so the first, what was the, the last one? UK travel agency helping extreme holidaying Brits to visit world's most dangerous places. Yeah, people are fucking weird. I think that's real. Like that, what are the, and yeah. then, like, you know what I mean? Like people are fucking crazy. So I think, mm-hmm. why like. They'd be like, take me to the bottom of a pit where I can't get out again for fun. And like, that would be like, they would go into IG live and like, that would be the whole thing. Maybe. Um, All right. Drum roll. Wait, I didn't pick one. Oh. No, I was saying like that <laughs> wouldn't be it. Oh, oh. Uh, what the hell is oh, wrong I with you? I thought you were saying that's what you picked. No. Uh, what are the first two? Cambridge professor wants to start a department dedicated to the study of Meghan Markle and the British tourist who thought people in Australia saying good morning to her. Ah, that's... Sun- How are you? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with that one because it feels like something the you would British say. British tourist? Yeah. Again, you are both... Come on! No way. The dog poo war being real is crazy. The one that I made up was the Cambridge professor completing, wanting to create a department dedicated to the study of Meghan Markle. I hate you so much. You were actually really good at this because not, they were all believably terrible. I can't believe that uh, like... Un- a news article place, whatever, allowed the word poo to be like <laughs> what you call dog poo, I guess. The dog poo wars, too. I thought too. it would have been like dog feces, like something a little yeah, more sophisticated, science-y. but it's like dog poo. I'm like, oh, Now, now right. I'm going to say, you said I was good at this. You thought Queen Elizabeth wanted to transition genders in the last few <laughs> years of life. No, but like, to, to be fair, Tommy and I both were, we heard that we one did. and we were both like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're like okay game on like that, that that adds up but you know what's funny once that one existed then i was like oh so they do they are going to be a little bit more of a ridiculous one moving right forward so that's why we picked the ridiculous ones, ones moving forward but they were always right after that so honestly i think the winner of the game is you chris Thank yeah you. <laughs> good point very good point chris congratulations you win the fat bastard tommy don't forget you're playing for the fat bastard so the thing model is, of wine uh, not a sponsor could be a sponsor <laughs> Um, but Tommy does think he came out of this with a clue. Yes, that is true. You uh, something London, something British, yeah. something UK. Okay, we, we can't confirm okay. or deny, but that you do think you've come out of it with something, which we'll take. So did they? Did we talk about Irish people too? We did. So that's why I'm no, thinking no, no, UK. There were no, there were no, I mentioned my Irish coworker. That had nothing to do with the we game. We didn't talk about the Irish people. Got it. Yeah, okay. that had nothing to do with the game. That would be an unfair thing for me okay. to take from that. 
Uh, um, actually, I have a question. Uh, yeah, in, go ahead. in the last segment, we were in, we were talking a lot about your your Broadway your Broadway time, um, but also part of your bio. Anywhere you, we look you up online, and John and I did do a lot of stalking beforehand. It's true. Uh, um, <laughs> the reality TV, and we've talked about this a little bit beforehand. Um, that that's sort of another part to who you are and what your career is. Uh, while you were on Broadway, were you still like? I got to get on reality TV because I feel like a lot of people would be the other way. They start on reality TV and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, it'd be cool to get to Broadway. Yeah, I really wanted to get on Big Brother. Okay. That's all I really cared about, to be honest with you. I liked the challenge a lot. I watched with my family. We loved it. But Big Brother is I, I knew I was meant to be on that show. So that's why I tried out every year. There was no other shows that I was trying out for. It wasn't. I got to get on reality TV. It was more, I got to get on Big Brother. Mm -hmm. I'm meant to play this game. I'm meant to do well. I'm meant to leave my mark on the game. Um, so that's more what it was about for me. And then I thought I'd go back to Broadway, but then the pandemic hit right after. Yeah. So it kind right. of... Could you give it just, if for anyone that doesn't know what Big Brother is, I know it's a yeah, pretty yeah. intense um, So game. Big Brother is a social experiment in which... 16 strangers or house guests are locked in a house together and with they're cut off from the outside world. There's no communication at all. No TVs, no windows even. No phones, Jesus. obviously. Um, they're being recorded 24-7 and all of the footage is being broadcasted online. In addition, there are three episodes per week on CBS. Um, wow. Three hour-long episodes. So it is like, and the, the house guests live in the house for three months. It's crazy. So it is a, a brutal, long game, being cut off from the world for three months. While you're in the house, you're playing these competitions, and you're competing for power. Um, and you evict each other one at a time from the house, and the last person left in the house wins the prize, which is now at $750,000. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. That is, that, uh, so there's like no sunlight. Literally no sunlight. So you, you, you know, on the show, they make it look like we have a backyard, but we only have the backyard two days a week because oh. that's where the competitions are held. So it's okay. in, under constant construction. Um, so, yeah, it's it's rough. It's literally um, we, we have Whoa. no sunlight, no clocks, nothing. Did you have to prepare five days a week? Prepare yourself like mentally to do that, because I don't know if I would be able to do that. Truly. Yeah. A lot of people struggle mentally in, in the game, but to be honest with you, I didn't. I don't know why, but I, I really didn't. It was fine for me. Um, it's it, it it's difficult, but like honestly, if you throw me in a room with anybody, I could just have a conversation and be good and be content. Yeah, we, like, we've gotten that. I don't need <laughs> I don't I don't need a lot. I don't require a lot. People love to meditate. They needed to be outside. They needed to feel the earth. It's just not me. Like, sure. I'm good being in sweats, laying down all day long. Like I'm good. So I don't, yeah, I, I it's definitely a mind fuck. Like not being able to see the time. Yeah. Um, that was crazy. But in terms of like, did you get bored? No, I, I didn't. Honestly, I was good. I know when wow. John, what John, when John was away, uh, filming the circle, mm -hmm. when he came back, well, when he was gone, one of his favorite comedians, Norm MacDonald, died. And so there were, like, all these news stories yeah. that he didn't know about. Were there any big news stories that you came out of this bubble and you were like, whoa, I can't believe that happened? Well, I remember um, – what is the kid's name? It's so funny. Okay, so in Newsies, we did a segment with this kid from Disney Channel. I think his name is Cameron Boyce or Cameron Bryce. Cameron Boyce, I'm pretty I sure. Don't know. Um, I could look that up. But – we did a whole segment with him. We filmed with him for an entire day. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I remember. A young kid. Yeah, I remember him. Um, Boyce, uh, I can't remember yeah, his he was name in right grown now. Ups. It's yeah, me. I know exactly who you're talking about. It, yeah, and uh, he died when we were in the house. And when I got back out, no one thought to tell me like, "Oh my gosh, like this kid died while you were away." So I remember finding out months later. Yeah, like eight months later, and I was like, "Wait, what?" He's dead. Oh my God, that's horrible. What? Yeah. And then I was like, Oh my God, it was while I was in the house. I I've had no idea that this happened. Wow. You lose so much touch with. Yeah. Society. I think like 
and I want to hear about your experience with this. I kind of lost like guidance of like who I was while I was in there because so much of it was like playing a game. Yeah. And then you come out. Plus, especially because you're catfishing. True. But like, you really lose touch of who you are. Yeah. But like, I think when you're in a house with that many people for that long, like, not every interaction is genuinely who you are. Like, yeah, you can't absolutely. A hundred percent. Do you, when you came back, do you remember like just kind of almost like getting into a societal norm again and feeling like, how do I even start this right now? It feels so different. Yeah. The biggest thing transitioning back into the real world for me was I have a big Italian family and, uh, I couldn't be in a room with a lot of people. It would, it would give me anxiety. So I, I would, be in a room with my family for five minutes and then I would get overwhelmed and have to go like chill in the other room and like sit on the couch. So that was like the biggest thing for me for like a month. That was the case. Just big crowds overwhelmed me. That's, cr- and that's so crazy so for someone weird. like you who is such like an entertaining person. You love being Outgoing. in front of people. I didn't expect it. I don't know where that came from, why it happened, but that was something that was tough for me transitioning back. Um, oh, man, I mean, yeah, it's tough. But to your point, when you said sometimes you do things that are not who you are because you're playing a game a hundred percent. I mean, in our, uh, season, there was cases of bullying and yeah. in the real world, if some, if you see someone not being treated fairly, it's very easy. I mean, it's, it, you, I would have no problem saying like, Hey, I actually don't think this is right. But when you're playing for at the time, $500,000, like to win, you don't want to paint paint a target on yourself. So no. I'm so sorry, but I'm not going to stick up for you here. There's like no this, morality. this is not the real world. This is a game and I'm here to win. And that's all I care about. So everything else comes second. I'm not trying to be the example of a person in this house. I'm just no. trying to win and get ahead. So, so, oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was going to in the same way we were talking earlier about how, when you're watching a Broadway show, you're like, Oh, I want, I, I, I want to play that role or I yeah, can play yeah. that role. Can you still watch Big Brother now that after being on it, you're still a fan? Yeah. Okay. I will never miss a, I'll, I go back and watch it over and over That's again. Cool. I'm rewatching season 10 for like the fourth or fifth time. I love the show. It's great. It's so good. Yeah. That's so cool, man. Yeah, it is cool. What about you with the circle? New season comes out. Well, I guess the, it, will out, it will be out. It will be out. And, uh, I'm definitely going to watch it. I, when I watched our, like our season, you know what happens. I'm mm-hmm. sure you went through the same. Well, no, because it's live. No, it's, it's live. live. Yeah. I forgot about that. So I knew what happened, and I remember watching it, and I've like I watched to the end. But there was a part of me like that, that had a really tough time. You know, when you watch stuff get eliminated, you know what's coming. Mm-hmm. At the time when I got eliminated, I was actually like, okay, like it's fine. Uh-huh. I did a good job. I did better than I thought I was going to do. We're good. You did great. You Thank were, you. Re- you made your mark. You you did great in the game. Dude, we were thanks. all very proud of him. Yeah, Thank he you. did amazing. The thing that stunk, though, was like when people would be like, I stopped watching when you got out. And I was like, no, you got to watch the uh, whole show. Like, yeah. you got to watch the whole show. Like, th- That's why I think, like, to your point about being a fan, but like, I was a huge fan of the show mm-hmm. before I went on, you feel a part of a legacy or something. Do you want to know something? F- uh, sorry, I, this was so, I didn't mean to. No, go ahead. Go um, ahead. I just thought about this. I never told you this, I don't think. My cousin and my father were in the UK. Uh, they were going to be on either your season or the one that's coming out now. Right? Shut because up. It was, yeah. You no were on, way. You were on the... I was on four or five. Yeah. It's coming out. Yeah. So um, they were in the UK because they were filming back to back. And they were going to be on your season... But they, they were just like waiting. They got sent home. They were going to catfish as me, actually. No oh so way. Crazy. Yeah. It was my dad and my cousin. They were going to be a duo catfishing as me. Dude, are you hearing the weird, crazy crossovers we have in I our know. lives? Like, this is crazy. That is Insane. what? Insane. They were in the UK and they got sent home. And then a couple of months later, actually, my cousin who was there, uh, they loved her, uh, Studio Lambert. They brought her back to do the Traders. So she's oh, actually nice. on the show now that's going to come out in a little bit. Dude. Wow. What? It's so full circle. That would have freaked Literally. me out. I know. They filmed their whole entire uh, like segment, whatever, their intro package. Yeah, yeah. They know all the same crew that you know and stuff. They were fully there, but it didn't work out because Man. I think that what they said was 
Well, first they wanted them for season five, and I think we had a, a, a family wedding, but we think that they wanted them because Brett from Big Brother is on oh, season yeah, five. Yeah, he's on season five. So I think they wanted them to kind of like like a catfish as Tommy who knows Brett and like see yeah, that Yeah, see how that would have worked. Um, but it didn't work out. So then they still sa- sent them to the UK for season four. But um, they had the Spice Girls, which was a duo catfishing. And I didn't think they oh, wanted a duo catfishing. That makes that sense. Makes sense. So wow. that's kind of what happened. They but got, it, it all worked out because my cousin got to be on a, a new show. She's excited. It that's was great. super fun. I can't wait to watch it. But that's like a little tea Whoa, behind the scenes no that way. your listeners could hear. That is insider information yeah. I know I was going to get yeah, tonight. You and, you and John are like... Uh, souls it's like you know like the, uh, we just keep missing each yeah. other like ships passing in the <laughs> night but now finally we, we're on the same course <laughs> have you ever heard that thing it's like eight like the eight stages of kevin bacon or whatever where it's like if you yeah could yeah pick one. yeah yeah uh-huh. this is what this is yeah. it's like the eight stages of tommy and john uh-huh. like when how can you link us together yeah. being in the same place so um, funny but i knew i knew Alyssa beforehand too your girlfriend because we had hung out in new york so her, we have a mutual friend, Holly. I'm yes, sure you big know. brother Holly. So yes. Holly was like putting them us in touch, but Alyssa kind of knew that I was in the UK, but it wasn't really me. It was my cousin, oh. my dad. It was a whole thing. It was crazy. Whoa! And she never yeah. told me that. No I know. way. I'm yeah. gonna take that up with her. Yeah. Um, and on a related note, we're gonna move on to our third so game. Sorry, Are you ready? I'm, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Good stuff. That was <laughs> awesome. Uh, we're g- moving on to a game called Oh Boy. Covering, More games. <laughs> covering crap. Perhaps you'd favor us with it? My pleasure. You see, I came down with a searing case of who gives a crap. <laughs> That's the name of the song. Covering okay. Crap uh, is brought to you by Forget the Pet. Forget the Pet is a service that will come to your house and rid your yard of all your pet's business. Get 10% off with promo code Covering Crap and get your yard. get the yard your neighbor wishes for. I hope they're happy with that ad read. A little yeah, stutter in there. I mean, look, they can't be perfect. I don't even know if they listen to the show. Uh, All right, so why don't you explain the game? So, to Tommy, you? here's the game. Mm-hmm. Chris and you are going to be playing head to head. And boy, there's going to be five. I'm scared of him. <laughs> he's good. He's Silent g- killer. Yeah, Silent he's killer. got some tricks up his sleeves. I could see it already. <laughs> so, the way the game works is I've picked five songs. Okay. And they're all famous songs. Okay. However,. They're awful cover versions. Okay. <laughs> so your job is to try to, you know, just shout the name of the answer of the song quickest. Okay. Okay? I think you, you numbered these in order. I did. I numbered so them I in order. Them, right? Yes, exactly. Right. So I don't know these songs, to, no. to be clear. Okay. And they're, they're all not labeled with the title. They're called Covering Crap and then a number. So okay, great. I'm not cheating. Yeah. I trust you. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> this would be a really sad thing to cheat at. Okay. <laughs> all right. We good? Let's do it. Uh, party, no, uh, it's Little Mermaid, um, Poor Unfortunate Souls. Oh, we got around the number one, Poor Unfortunate Souls, the one of the worst cover songs I've ever heard in my that life. That was pretty bad. By the Jonas <laughs> Brothers. It was awful. I, Why did it sound like Screamo? I, I, it was I awful. turned it, it up. Was the, I turned it up too loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it was. I was like, it was, the Jonas oh my God. Brothers, that's not what I thought it was. The Jonas Brothers went in on Poor Unfortunate Souls. So Tommy <laughs> leads the game one nothing going into covering crap. I, number I, two, did you have any guess? I had absolutely no guess, and I'm actually a little nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to hear number two? Let's do it. I hope, I hope, I hope to make I hope. Snow White. That's not the name of the song. Is it Off to Work We Go? No. You're both on the song, but you haven't named it yet. It's not called Hi Ho or Off to Work We Go? No. Work. work. Um, Tom, the Tom, work song. You're getting. You're so close. The working song. What do they do while they work? Sing. Whistle while you work. There it is. Hi and hi ho in parentheses. But Tommy up two nothing. Tommy could clinch the game here. Uh, three songs in. Tommy, what do you think so far of covering crap? If only this was for the fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I would feel a lot more confident. <laughs> oh, don't forget everybody. Tommy's playing for the big prize of the fat bastard. And if- <laughs> <laughs> Should he lose, he has to autograph the bottle and the next person will pay for it and let it age. 
That's right. The 2020 Pinot Noir. Great right, year for so wine. Let me write these down. We had Poor Unfortunate Souls. Unfortunate. Okay. And then we had Hi Ho or Whistle While You Were. You could say Hi Ho. Yeah. But okay. you don't say that in public. But you could definitely <laughs> say Hi Ho. Hey Ho. Okay. <laughs> All right. Number three. Oh, what Party world. What was it? Ashley Tisdale. Part of your world. It's actually by Miley Cyrus. Oh shit! But, but okay, it's close. The, I gotta tell you. I gotta tell from the Little Mermaid. Yes. Yeah. I gotta tell you that I'm one so was bad also at bad. I'm so, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Tommy clinches the game. I feel like we should just do the fourth one and fifth one for no, fun. We'll, we'll do them. Uh, you know, we like having fun here. We do. We yeah, do. Yeah, I'm having fun crushing Chris. Too, yeah. So, you on, were afraid of him going. going into the game. Now, now you're like, scared. you're like, step on his throat. But then, <laughs> then you gave me three Disney ones in a row and I'm, I'm thriving. Are uh, you a Disney guy? Yeah. All right, sure. we'll get to it. We'll Absolutely. Get to it. All right. Number four. Hold hands around the fire and sing my song. Hot one dog, put a smile on your face so we can live together in this happy place. Uh. Small world. It's a small <laughs> <laughs> Was that a, a hip hop same bird? time? It, uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, you beat him by a country mile, as far as I'm concerned. I, was that a hip hop version? It was a rap version of "It's a Small World After All." Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, we'll do the fifth one. I Who don't did want... that? Who's saying that? I don't know. I gotta tell you, Disney Mania was a deep, scary oh, place. Yeah. You remember those? Yeah, of course. They were so good. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, so good. <laughs> that's a very animated reaction. Give me a little <laughs> Annalise Vanderpool right now, and that's all I need. I'll be I, set. I, I want to end my misery here. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Number five. I just know there's something bigger out there. Tarzan. I know. Strangers I like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Banger of an album by Phil Collins. Shout so out Phil good. Collins, not a sponsor. Um, <laughs> I it, will listen to Tarzan now on the way home. I, that I is just, my that favorite so soundtrack good. in yep, Disney history. The best. Okay, so I lost five nothing. <laughs> I, I believe that was. Uh, Keep talking. I'm going to check the camera. Oh, okay, that was an, an abysmal performance for me. I want to apologize to all of our listeners, sponsors, and Tommy. It's not your fault you went against the Disney King. <laughs> no, I'm Though, just I think, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I think you're happy that um, uh, you absolutely eviscerated me here. Well, let's, let's, let's run it to the end here, right? Let's Great. do it. All right, we got one more game, and then Tommy gets to guess for the fat bastard. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, is there any, well, before we get to the game, is there anything else we want to... Uh, oh, yeah, do? actually, Tommy, I wanted to ask you about something. Yep. Um, we've talked about your background in theater. We've talked about your background on reality TV, including Big Brother and The Challenge. I just and you you have your own podcast. There's just so much. There's so much that you do. Is there something you haven't done yet, or like what's like what's your what's next, man? Like I don't know that like you've done so much by such a young age. Like one, you should be super proud of yourself. But two, like is there something that you think about? You're like I haven't done it yet. Um, <clears throat> to be honest with you, no. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. I really just like, um. I'm, I'm, I just want to keep making a living as a performer. I love being in the industry. Um, I love that I, that I have a lot of flexibility, that I get to be super close with my family still. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I really feel pretty good, honestly. I'm I'm I just want to keep doing exactly what I'm doing, kind of. Um, I mean, like, yeah. When I see your stuff, and like, just as somebody who consumes so much stuff on the internet social media and like reality TV, you're so refreshing, I think, because you're so honestly yourself. Thanks. Yeah. And I, th I think that's, it's nothing you could teach anybody. And Thanks. I, I think like my biggest like question with that is just, is there ever a time where just you're so yourself that you're just like, I got to shut it off and like stay off of everything for a little bit. And I got absolutely, unplug. I mean, there's one. So after, Broadway is super competitive. It's a super tough industry. And then the pandemic hit and it's been tough for me to get back on Broadway since because it was already super competitive. Yeah. Now it's even more competitive. Luckily, I have like other sources of income, whether it be doing a reality show or um, social media is a, is a big way that I make my money th yeah. these days. And I have a lot of fun with it, but I can't put pressure on it to the point that I won't enjoy it. So like, for example, this is just at the top of my mind right now. Christmas just passed and there's all these pressures to post around the holidays and share your experience when you're an influencer. But yeah. if I'm not feeling it, 
if I just want to be present and be with That's my it. family, I always give myself that the okay to do that. So you'll see like, I mean, I don't know if people notice even, but there's a lot of times where I just shut down. I stay offline for a little bit and that's okay. I don't You're allowed to do put that. the pressure on myself to show up every day because then it takes the fun out of it. And when it, when there's no fun in it, when it becomes a job, then I, it, it, I do my worst work. If that makes sense. I'm my best like self. You, you'd when, lose your mind if you had to yeah. videotape your whole life. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah, absolutely. And it, honestly, I don't mind sharing. Like, I'll share anything. I'm an open book. Sure. Yeah. It's more just about, like, the pressure, like, the stress of getting it together. I'd rather be present sometimes. Like, it feels like work sometimes. Like, I'll yeah. film a video, but then I have to edit it and make sure that it's synced up and all these things. Make sure that I post it in the right way and whatever. It's Sometimes it, it, it takes the fun out of it. So, I, like make sure that I set boundaries with myself. If I'm not feeling it, I'm not doing it. That's it. Good. That's it, kind it, of good for you, dude. I don't know how, what you like, what the question even was, how I got there, but no, uh, no, I asked you like, how, do, when do you find time to shut off? And like, you've answered yeah, it very clearly. I, I give myself the time to turn off when I'm just not feeling it. Yeah. I think, I think that's like something I, most listeners or most consumers of it don't understand is like, yeah. they want so much from, I mean, you, uh, anybody who has a following, it's like, we're still, just people, like you said, were yeah. fans that went on a show. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that's what I think people don't realize. Like we were like, they think we're like, Oh now they must post everything and do everything. And yeah. It's like, not the case. Yeah. Sometimes I You're just, just a person like to hang out with my fam and keep it chill. Wear and sweats. Be in the moment. Yeah. Be, like yeah. that's more what it's about. I don't even mind sharing negative things that are happening to me. If I'm struggling, I, do all the time. I don't mind sharing that stuff. It's not that I want to post only the good things. It's that, Sometimes it's important to me to be super present and sometimes I have the flexibility like in the headspace to like stay on the phone for a, a half hour, whatever it takes to like edit this video the way that I want it mm -hmm. to look or whatever it yeah. is, you know? Amen to that, dude. So, yeah. So uh, oh, yeah. before we hit our last game, uh, you, yeah. got, you got any projects that are coming down the pike? Anything that people should be looking out for? Um, I have a few... Pots on the burner. Is that the saying? That's good know. enough for me. Yeah, it like I, I'm, I'm trying to make some things happen, yeah. but there's nothing set in stone, no. to be honest with you. And that's okay. That's that's the nature okay. of the biz. Okay. It's all good. But well, I'm um, sure everyone yeah. will be looking for you on a, on a, in another play or on Thanks. another show soon. Uh, regardless, yeah, it's not so. as, from what I've come to understand from you. It's not far away from your next thing. It will happen. It's just it. I really do. I'm a big believer in. What's meant to be will happen. Yeah. Uh, I love that. For example, like we spoke about, um, I, I don't know if it caught on there, but on the audio we got, I, I told you about my cousin and my father's experience when yeah. they were in for the circle and how it didn't work out for them and they were crushed at the time. But then it le led to this Your brand cousin. new opportunity for my cousin and now it, it like it worked out for the best, but she didn't know that at the time. So no, even when not. our struggles present themselves to us, it leads us to the next thing. Absolutely. And we don't know what's around the corner. So yeah. I, I'm a big believer in that. Well, Man, that's a cool message to, to give everybody. I love that. that yeah. Awesome. Cool message to lead us into an insane game. Um, this <laughs> the is the last game. Oh of the game. boy. The, this is probably the hardest game, the hardest game, <laughs> but the Gosh. hardest game with the coolest sponsor, if I might say myself, uh, this is called Before or After, Before and After. On the wheel, there it is, and here comes our next puzzle, Before and After. Terry, you ready? Yes. Spin it. Tommy, this is how the game works. So what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a situation. Have you ever played Wheel of Fortune, like watch Wheel of Fortune? Yeah, yeah. Category of Before and After. It's something that links together. Okay. So the example of it would be, if I read it to Chris, is this musician caught great acclaim for his song All of Me before making an appearance on this Nickelodeon game show from the 90s, to okay. which Chris would say the answer is... Uh, John Legends of the Hidden Temple. Oh, okay. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Got and it. then I would ask you, because there's two layers to this, what came first, John Legend's first album or the first episode of Legends of the Hidden Temple? Oh, boy. Okay, and this is a tough one. So you could possibly get two points for every question. Uh-huh. There are five... Examples that I'm going to give you. Okay. If you get six out of ten points, <gasps> we'll give you a free clue for the final round of the game. Oh we'll give gosh. you a free clue. Okay, let's go. So the All stakes right. are high for the, the fat stakes bastard. Are so high. The stakes are high for the fat the bastard. And oh. speaking of the stakes being high, bro, <laughs> before or after, before and after is brought to you by Power Milk. 
If milk wasn't enough for a pump, Power Milk will take it to the next level. Power Milk puts 350 milligrams of caffeine in your 1%. Get a free case with promo code NOTE and change everything you knew about working out. Feel the power with Power Milk. That was a, a terrible transition. Oh. <laughs> that was one of my worst, on a related but it was a clean note. read. So on a related note, let's get to the game, Tommy. Are you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. This is your first one. These ingredients used to make the Powerpuff Girls would be of no use without a follow or a mention, according to Drake. Okay. I can read it again for you. Say it. Yeah, one more time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, ready? Let's put it together mm-hmm. as a team. These ingredients used to make the Powerpuff Girls would be of no use without a follow or a mention, according to Drake. Can you get the top part? Sugar, spice, and everything nice for what? Oh, hey, let, let's go. Woo! First one, that's a point on the board. Yeah. All right, Tommy. Now, here's the question. Okay. What came first? The first episode of the Powerpuff Girls or the first episode of Degrassi? <gasps> Which Drake was in? If- oh, my gosh. I'm going to go with the Powerpuff Girls. That would be correct. Powerpuff Girls came out in 1998. Degress came out in 2001. Tommy, you're two points on the board in the first question. Okay. A third of a way to a free point. How okay. about that? <laughs> and if you it. use promo code NICE, you could get a free case of Power Milk. <laughs> um, the la- <laughs> Sorry, ready? Here we go. Wait, NICE or NOTE? Oh, NOTE. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh! We're going to lose all this. Sponsors. Yeah, this is so bad. All right. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> all right. Question number two. The commonly used nickname for the country of Australia appears in the chorus of this Rihanna hit featuring Jay-Z. Want me to read it again? Like down under umbrella? Like you're, you're getting there. This commonly used nickname for the country of Australia appears in the chorus of this Rihanna hit featuring Jay-Z. Okay, so down under my umbrella. There you go. Got it. The land down under my umbrella nailed yep. it. That's one point. Now, here's my question for you. What came first, the hit song Land Down Under by Men at Work or the hit song Umbrella by Rihanna? Down Under, Men at Work. Nailed it. Because I don't even know them, so they got to be a little older. <laughs> right? Yeah, there it is. That's a great, the logic <laughs> precedes him, folks. That is four <laughs> points on the board for Tommy. Going to the third question. Here we go. Paul... <laughs> Paul Revere. Oh, boy. What is this one? I'm nervous. <laughs> Paul Paul Revere. Calm down. It's for the fat bastard. You're crying. <laughs> Paul Revere shouted this on his midnight ride, which inspired the opening line to Mr. Brightside by the Killers. So it's coming out of my cage. Yeah. But we don't, we don't know about Paul Revere. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know about him. Coming down the mountain when she comes. <laughs> like, like, uh, American right, so. Revolution, Paul Revere. Your history teachers are, mm-hmm. are I, You're the history buff. Chris has got <laughs> Chris, me. Chris has you by the He's balls here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so even if you can't get it, you still get a chance on the before, the, which came first. Yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. because I don't think I can get it. Okay. <laughs> do you want to take a, a Hail Mary guess? So it's something coming down the mountain. No. I mean, no, 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 no. It's, it's not something coming down the mountain. It is, uh, wait, what was the second part again? The second part, oh, coming out of my cage. Yeah. So it's something coming. She is coming. Oh, shit. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. Leave it in. Leave it in. It's staying in the podcast. She is coming out of my cage. <laughs> That wouldn't be correct, but I wish she was. The the actual answer is the British are coming out of my cage right, and I've been doing just right. fine. <laughs> to which I ask you, Tommy, what happened first? Wh- or what started first or who was born first? Paul Revere or the band The Killers? Paul Revere. There he is. And he's on the board All with right. another point. We got another, we're up to five. We're right? up to five. I so, Tommy, one more. one more point okay. Come on, gets you point. the free clue. And here we go. This popular kid's song tries to get a bug to go away until one of Frank Sinatra's greatest hits comes on. Shoe fly with me. Shoe come fly with me? No, oh no, 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 no. Not, that's come fly with me. Right. Oh, shoot. Shoe fly me to the moon. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. 
Tommy six points on the oh board, and for God. shits and giggles, thank God. <laughs> for shits and giggles, what came first, Tommy? Lord of the Flies, the famous book, or Fly Me to the Moon by Frank Sinatra? Lord of the Flies. Unfortunately, Tommy, that one okay, we're is the wrong, other way around. But it's okay because but we can we have, we got you know we can lose now. It's all right. You can you can feel free to lose. Uh, I will tell you that Fly Me to the Moon came out in April 1954. Lord of the Flies came out in September of 1954. So it was Whoa. that close. So it was really close. It was really close. Okay, cool. So close that if you use promo code, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 all right, here we go. The last one. A dirty profession found on the rooftop of 19th century London flats is undermined when Johnny Lawrence tries to perform this illegal move on Daniel LaRusso in The Karate Kid. Okay. I'm not going to get this one because <laughs> I, I don't know The Karate Kid. That's which okay. Is a, you know, Do you know, know the know first part, right. though? But wait, say the first part one more time. A dirty profession found on the rooftop of 19th century London flats. Oh, a chimney sweep. Okay. So a sweep, chimney sweep, sweep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sweep chop. Okay, chimney sweep chop is not right. Okay. But <laughs> that's okay because for shits and giggles, Tommy, what came first, the profession of chimney sweeps or the movie Karate Kid? The profession of chimney sweeps. That would be correct, Tommy. Okay. You finished the game. You, gotta give him the, you didn't give him the answer. Oh, the, the answer was yeah, chimney well, sweep the leg. Okay. In the Karate Kid. In the okay. Karate Kid. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the Karate Kid, I don't know. Um, but here's the deal. You did really well. Okay. Yeah. Which means we're going to give you a free clue. Okay. The, the additional clue we're going to give you is the person that you're trying to figure out is fictional and has been in a book, a play, and a movie. Book, so play, movie. Why, don't, why don't we... While, while, Let's do a recap here Yeah, with Tommy, Tommy, while you're thinking, uh, at least this last game, John, why don't you give them the, the, the zany sentences? So your, your sentences are as follows. Sugar, spice, and everything nice for what? The land down under my umbrella. The British are coming out of my cage and I've been doing just fine. Shoe fly me to the moon. Chimney sweep the leg. And then our question for you is that just so you can think out loud. Okay. Um, what, what have you, have you, what have you, what do you think you've placed together from the earlier game, any of the earlier games? So I wrote down on the, the guest book. Nice. <laughs> Julie sponsored. Andrews. Okay. okay. Why? Because she was in all of these movies, I believe. Okay. My Fair Lady, Shrek 2, Santa Music, Princess Diaries. Okay. I cannot confirm that she was in Shrek 2, but I do know that she was in Santa Music, My Fair Lady, and I believe the Princess Diaries as well. Okay. So that's why I'm thinking Julie Andrews. Okay. <clears throat> She's also... I mean, a Disney no, legend. That is true. So that's why we've got these Disney. She connects with Disney. And she's British. So she's all the British headlines. Okay. I'm wrong, though, because you're... No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to... But uh, she's fictional. The, the, so, that's the only thing. Our person is... So I'm going to go with Mary Poppins. And Tommy, we got great news for you. You've won the fat bastard. Congratulations. You did it. Mary Poppins was the overarching theme of the episode. Chris, why don't you talk Tommy through everything? Yeah, so you were co exactly correct in the first game. Uh, Julie Andrews is in all those movies. Julie Andrews plays Mary Poppins. In Shrek 2, she is... The voice of the queen. The, the voice of the queen. Oh, okay, okay. Um, she's in Princess Diaries. She's the grandmother. Yes. The formidable grandmother. Round two, they're all British headlines. Yeah, yeah British or UK headlines. Yeah. So you are right on the nose with that. Number three, all Disney songs. Disney songs. Mary Poppins is a Disney movie. Julie Andrews, as you said, is a Disney legend. And the fourth one, this was definitely the hardest. All of these sort of had something to do with Mary Poppins. Sugar, spice was... Uh, oh, Sugar, yeah. spoonful of sugar. Yes. The British are coming out of my cage. Yes. The land down under my umbrella, obviously the famous Mary Poppins umbrella. Oh, my Shoe gosh. fly me to the moon. The umbrella makes her fly. Chimney sweep the leg. As we know, Bert, Dick Van Dyke. Wait, this was Chimney sick. sweep. This is like an escape room on a podcast. <laughs> like, I can't get over this this concept. This is amazing. Oh, man. Thank, thank you very you. much. This That's is really... so cool. <laughs> Dude, you crushed it. Um, I can't believe it. Why don't, you, why don't you, before we get any deeper than this, why don't you tell the people where they could find you? Yes. In, in case they haven't already, please. Find me at Tommy Bracco on all the social platforms. Um, 
LinkedIn. Would love to see you there. Not a LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got to work on that one. <laughs> Actually, I might have a LinkedIn. <laughs> Was that from before, be before the Broadway days? Yeah, there might be one hidden somewhere in the abyss. The I'm not sure about that. <laughs> um, I can't get over that I won, and I also can't get over this concept. Like, I'm just still so impressed. Dude, I got to tell you, thank you so much for even taking the time to do it because uh, you are top of our list. Somebody wants to come on here and hang this out with so us. so cool. Glad you had a great time doing it. I'm so happy that you got Mary Poppins. So, uh... And actually, right the here. coolest part... Yeah, please sign the book, Mary Poppins. Give it the, get it the autograph that uh, the fat bastard didn't get. <laughs> and I'm so glad that what ended up doing it was the bonus clue. Because you would have said Julie Andrews yep. had you not given the fictional character. You're 100% right. Tommy... Congratulations, my friend. You won on a related note. Thank you, John. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much, Thank guys. This was awesome. Thank you for coming on once oh, again. Goodness. For all of you listening at home, that was Tommy Bracco's episode of On a Related Note. I'm John Franklin. And I'm Chris Dallariva. And we'll catch you next time. On a Related Note. On a Related Note, this is a song that we wrote. Now let's get to the podcast.